Yesterday I started a video broadcast called Socially Distancing from Toxic Traits and I'm going to do the second part of this message today and we we focused on several types of people to avoid in our last message and we're going to go on to the second portion of this message today and we're going to start with Proverbs 5 and I'd like to bullet point this one, the seducer or the immoral or the adulterer, or we could say the adulterer or adulteress. We're supposed to avoid people who are engaged in that kind of, kind of behavior and not be led into sin in that sort of way. And so we're going to start reading Proverbs 5 where it says, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight, that you may ma maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of the adulteress drip honey, and her speech is smooth, smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall and sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my son, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel, lest strangers feed, feast on your wealth and, the, and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end your life, of your life you will groan, when your flesh and body are spent, you will say, Oh, how I hated discipline. Oh, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors, and I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow into the streets, your streams of water into the public square. Let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May the may your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. And so it's talking here about how <clears throat> how we're not to be led astray by adultery. And adultery is a serious sin in the eyes of God, and that's something that God really hates, is when people are unfaithful to their spouses, to their wives or their husbands, and it's something that he really hates. It's even listed in one of the Ten Commandments, thou shall not commit adultery. And oftentimes we think about adultery in the sense of just, yo, know, messing around with somebody else's wife or husband. Yes, that definitely is adultery. But Jesus took it even a step farther when he defined what adultery was. He said to look with lust upon another human being can uh, make you just as much of an adulterer in your heart as it is to actually carry through with the act. And so, we're going to read what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. And I think we've all been guilty of this, and we have all fallen into sin in this matter, and we all could be condemned by God as sinners, just for the sake that we have uh, failed to not perfectly keep this command. Jesus said... Uh, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. And so... Jesus is basically saying even a look of lust, even when you look lustfully upon another person, you are just as guilty in the eyes of God as of adultery as you would if you actually carried through with the act. Now, of course, uh, a glance from the outward perspective doesn't seem to maybe go as far as the actual action, but it's still considered sin in God's eyes, and we still... All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so Jesus is talking really, really very much about how sometimes the intentions of our hearts can be just as sinful as actual actions. Because, you know, if you think about it, all sin starts in the heart. It all starts with an attitude or a mindset or a thought or a desire that we let go out of control. And then it, it spreads like fire and spreads into the uh, phase of acting out on that desire, and it can cause a whole lot of problems. 
And so basically in Proverbs 5, where it was talking about do not go anywhere near the door of her house, he's basically saying don't put yourself near temptation. I think that's exactly what he's saying. He's like avoid somebody you know who's going to tempt you in that sort of way. And you should steer clear of them and you should not get involved or or even entertain the possibility of it because it will cause your downfall and it will cause your destruction. If you get sucked into that, sin destroys. The wages of sin is death. And praise God that it adds, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so that means if we turn away from our sins and believe in Jesus Christ, that we believe he died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the dead, we can be saved and forgiven of sin. And we can have a new life, not for sin. Now that was one, that is one major thing we got to avoid is the seducer, the adulteress, or the adulterer. And it can go both ways. You know, man can just, there are there are men that can be just as much seducers as women. And so it goes both ways. And so, and the reason it talks about the adulterous woman here is uh, Proverbs is written from a man's perspective. It was written from King Solomon's perspective and he was writing from the shoes of a man. And so he's gonna give the male perspective on it, but it can go both ways. And we know that there are both men and women out there who have smooth as butter speech, but they really have deceptive, crafty, seducer intentions. And so we got to be careful of that these days. And we got to be careful of that at any time. And that's why the Bible was written for our edification and our instruction. Now, we will transition on to the next one where we're not supposed to be associated with someone who's a hothead. Uh, someone who's easily angered, who short fused blows up, explodes, gets angry easily. It says, and I will turn to it here in just a second. I turn to the passage just now. It's Proverbs 22, uh, 24 through 25. And it says, do not make friends with a hot tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered or you may learn your ways and get yourself ensnared. Let's read that again. Do not make friends with a hot tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. Saying, basically the proverb is saying, they can rub off on you. They can actually, you can start becoming like them. If you spend a lot of time with an angry person, you'll eventually start to feel that negativity, negativity enter your life, and you'll start becoming a negative, angry person like that. And it's saying that that's not healthy, that's not good. And so sometimes all we have to do is be around a toxic individual uh, for just long enough and eventually they start rubbing off on it. You know, Paul said, do not be deceived, bad company corrupts good character. And so we gotta really guard who we spend a lot of time with and definitely a hot-headed, angry person is not one of those people. And we, uh, we see that here, that that is a big no-no that if we know someone who's short fused, it's not a good idea to be in close proximity with them and to associate with them for longer than we have to. And there's some times where we can't avoid certain people and we have to like interact with them. We, we may work with people like this. We may, we may go out in our everyday life and have to interact with people. It's not talking about that, but it's saying a close relationship with someone who's like that is not a wise idea. And uh, and we'll see in the next one uh, some more clarification on that matter. Uh, but also another thing is if you're associated with someone who's easily angered, all it takes is for you to just trigger their wrong views. And depending on how severe their anger is and how bad of a problem they have with it, you might be in the crosshairs of their rage when that happens. And you don't want to be associated with that, or you may be with them at a time they really blow it up and explode, and they may do something that gets them into serious trouble, and you don't want to be associated with them when they get themselves into serious trouble. And that is just a no-no. That's uh, 
Sometimes you just don't want to be even seen with the wrong person when they're about to get into a serious load of trouble. Because that, that will affiliate you with them, and that's not wise, you know. So we're going to go to uh, another passage in uh, second in 1 Corinthians, and it tells us, and this one's a pretty interesting one. It's saying not to associate with anyone who calls themselves a believer in Jesus Christ, but is living a wicked lifestyle that is contrary to God's commands and immoral. And he's, he's not saying that you should just totally shun every unbeliever. He said in that case, you'd have to leave the world. But he's saying, you know, I've wrote specifically to you so that you do not associate with anyone who calls themselves a believer, but is living in a sinful life. And we'll turn to that passage specifically, uh, where we'll go here real quick. Got to find it real briefly. And so it's basically saying, you know, if somebody's calling themselves a Christian, yet living a wicked life or a life of sin, you're not supposed to really associate with them. Uh, and we'll go to, uh, let's see, let's find it here. One second. Okay, we've, we've found it. It says, uh, 1 Corinthians 5, and we'll start with verse 9. 5 verse 9. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Not at all meaning the people of this world who are sexually immoral or greedy or swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you'd have to leave the world. That is, but I'm writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister uh, but is sexually immoral or greedy or an idolater or slanderer or drunkard or swindler, do not even eat with such people. What business of my, it, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? It, Paul's basically saying, okay, what business is, is it of mine to judge non-Christians? You know, we're to hold Christians accountable. Uh, are you not to judge those inside? He, so he says, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those who are outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. And so he's basically saying, okay, I'm not talking about non-Christians. You know, they don't claim to be Christians. They don't claim to know the laws of God or follow his ways. So you can't hold non-Christians to the same standard you do Christians. He's basically saying that. And he's saying, if someone calls himself a Christian, yet is living in a totally contrary lifestyle of what this book says and what Christ teaches, then you're not to associate with them because they're going to lead you as, they're going to drag you down too. And it's also for their own uh, benefit that they may come to their senses and see the way they're acting is not in contrary to the truth. And I mean, and it seems harsh, but you know, it's what the scripture teaches and we have to really uphold the word of God. You know, sometimes we may come across a passage in the Bible where we're just like, wow, well that seemed kind of harsh, but we know that it's in there for a reason. And we know that God is perfect. His word is accurate and wise. And so uh, we can learn so much timeless truth from this book and learn about how we are to live our lives. We're to live our lives as a reflection of Jesus Christ and live for his ways and his purposes and reflect his life that, that he's called us to live. And then we're also to, you know, be careful with who we walk with because, you know, the friends we pick will determine the course of our life. You know, who we run with today can determine where we end up five years from now. And we want to be making progress. We don't want to be dragged down or be pulled the wrong way by the influences in our lives. God bless.